This tutorial focuses on the introduction to images and inline images. The first thing we're going to start off with is we're going to look at the different types of image file formats. Uh, and there are mainly four image file formats to do with web development and websites and website creation. Um, over the next number of tutorials, we'll deal with everything from background images to graphical images to image maps and so on. But in this one, we're going to deal with, as I say, image formats and inline images. So we'll kick off with image formats. There are four main types of common image file formats. And what I'm going to do is give you a brief introduction to them and maybe suggest ones that you should and shouldn't use in certain scenarios. The first one, um, and it's been around a long time, is a BMP or a bitmap. A bitmap is be made up of 16.7 million colors, which is more than the eye can see. Um, but is the most important thing about it is it's uncompressed. It means it makes no attempt whatsoever to make the file size smaller. Um, the second one is a very common file format called a JPEG, and it's its file formats are JPG, JPEG, JPE, all of them doing exactly the same thing. It just depends on the um, package used to create them as to what it's called, okay? Um, now, what about these? Well, there are 16.7 million colors, so the same number of colors, um, it can reach the same number of colors as a bitmap, um, but its main claim to fame is that it has automatic compression, which means that if you have two files, the exact same image uh, with the exact same number of colors, exactly the same, and you save one as a bitmap and one as a JPEG, the JPEG will be smaller because it automatically compresses the file. Next one is we have a GIF um, and they are graphical image formats. Um, the main thing that we need to know about GIFs is, well, first of all, it can only handle up to 256 colors um, and it is automatically compressed as well. Um, the other claim that a GIF has over a lot of the other image file formats is that it may contain animation. So you see what are known as animated GIFs. You see them on your phone, you see them on websites, etc., which are normally animated little cartoon-like uh, images, um, low enough quality with 256 colors maximum. The last one, and a fairly new introduction to the market, is a PNG, which is a portable network graphic. And this has a lot of the same characteristics as a JPEG. Um, it handles up to 16.7 million colors. It has automatic compression, uh, the exact same as a JPEG, but what a PNG has over a JPEG is it can be transparent. So you can have one color in it that's transparent. In other words, uh, you can see through it. Um, so when looking at these, what should we use? What shouldn't we use? Uh, is there any rule of thumbs that we should follow? Well, very simply, the bitmap, we should avoid them um, because they're, they're not automatically compressed. So if you have a bitmap, which is the exact same image as a JPEG or a PNG, it might have the same number of colors, but will be larger in size. So if you have a bitmap you want to use, just simply save it as a, as a JPEG or a GIF for a PNG, and then you can use it and it will be a lot smaller in size and therefore a lot less time to download it. Um, GIFs have up to 256 colors, which is very few in comparison to JPEGs and, and PNGs. Uh, so therefore, if you're going to be looking for photorealism in your imagery, um, well, GIF isn't the way to go, but it's very good. GIFs are very good at handling small numbers of colors that you might have in a logo or, or uh, you know, an animation in any way, shape or form. So they can be very good from that perspective. So avoid the, the bitmap and then, you know, it's up to you as to what you're trying to do with it as whether you're going to be using JPEG, GIF or PNG. Now, here's the, the Pepsi challenge. There's four images on the, on the screen here. All four of them um, look identical to the naked eye. Um, but they're quite different and they're all the four different types of formats that we talked about in the previous screen. So just to give us a hint at what maybe um, we're looking at here, I'm just gonna just let you see the size of the file. So you can see, they vary from 142 kilobits right up to 928 kilobits, okay? So huge difference in the size of file. 
Um, with the, you know, literally the, the one is four times bigger than the other uh, with regards to 928 over the 142. So it'll take four times longer to download that file. Um, you know, when you look at this, you can straight away say that the 928 is more than likely your bitmap because it is bigger than the other two. The two in the middle, the 302 and the 449 are probably your PNG and your JPEG and the 142 is is um, is your GIF in this case here and that actually is the case there. Um, with regards to your JPEG and your PNG, my advice would be to save it as both and see how you get on size-wise because looking at them, they're both identical in, in quality um, but the file size can be can vary depending on, on, on how it's uh, it's um, inline images. So what we're going to do here is we'll just give a little bit of an introduction to what an inline image is first of all and then we'll go into expression and we will show you how simple it is to deal with them. Um, so what is an inline image? Well an inline image is an image that is um, in line with your text, simple as that. Okay, so when you look at most of the images on the screen here, they're what are known as inline images. Okay, so I'm just scrolling down through this particular um, website, um, and I'm just going to highlight the ones that are actual inline images here. There's a lot of them. Okay, so you know, even right down to our very small um, social network graphics at the bottom here, um, you know, they're all inline images, and we use quite a few of them on websites. So there's something that we need to know what we're dealing with and, and, and best, we need to be able to optimize them uh, to achieve the best results, okay? So all of this is very straightforward and a lot of this we've dealt with in, uh, in Digital 4 already with regards to images, saving a different image file formats and of course, as well as that, uh, looking at the best uh, size that we can get and resizing them, etc. So we're gonna have a look at that again right now. So an inline image, an inline image, uh, I'll just jump into expression and we'll just uh, deal with creating an inline image, okay? So in this case here, I'm just going to drag this out ever so slightly here, there we go. Um, what we have is, I'm just going to press return down here at the bottom, just to give us a bit of space down here at the bottom. And I've created a section about images and I'm going to just stick in an image. And it's, it's as simple to put an image into expression as it is in Word or PowerPoint, etc. Um, we can either click on this icon right here, which is insert picture from file, or we can go insert picture from file by using the menu up here. Okay, it will be inserted, of course, wherever my cursor is, so it's down here at the moment. So if I insert it in there. Now, along with the advice that we, we imparted about in the last tutorial about um, uh, where we should store our files, the exact same applies when you're dealing with images. All of your image files should be stored in the same folder as your web pages, which I've done, okay? So I've got three files in here at the moment, which I've put in here. I'm going to use a TU Dublin one here, and it's gonna insert this. Uh, and um, as you can see here, what it's dealing with is the different types of, that it will actually put in here, okay? Um, so I'm gonna insert this one here, which is a JPEG. The first thing it asks me is to put in alternative text. Now, we've talked about this before when we were dealing with um, Digital 4 and the whole idea of search engine optimization. The importance of putting in alternative text because you've got to remember that um, Google and other search engines cannot read your images, but they can read the text that you um, you know, associate with an image. And what we can do here is we can actually put in alternative text, which is, I'm just gonna put in TU Dublin logo. And my long description, I can put in a long description of this. So as I'm gonna say here, here's one we prepared earlier, or here's one we robbed earlier. So I'm gonna take this from the TU Dublin website, okay? Which is a long description of what is TU Dublin. So I'm gonna put that in there. Now, remember that when possible, in your long description, keyword rich long description and keyword rich alternate text. Okay, So really, really important. Okay, And I'm just going to go, okay, so there's my image done. Now, can I just say about the alternate text, absolutely every single image that we put in there must have that. Okay, Because you're talking about optimizing for the search engine. So it's very, very important that we do that. 
okay? So that's as simple as it is to put in an image. If I want to just do it this way here, I click on this, choose an image, and I'm gonna write it always, always put in a keyword rich description. Okay, always. Now, that goes in very large. I'm gonna delete that there, but it just shows you how simple it is to put an image in there, okay? So I'll, I'll put that one in, in, in a minute when I'm, when I'm looking at something else, okay? So that's putting in an inline image. I'm just going to right click it here and go to picture properties, to show the properties of my image, okay? So what we have here is the name of my image. Now, my advice would also be to, in your folder that you store your image in, to rename the image to something and put keyword rich names on your images as well okay so you can see here my alternate text you can see my long description you can see if i want to link to something i can do it here okay so in my case i'll put a link on this in a minute which will link to tu dublin okay um and then the appearance okay which means inline which means if my text comes in or one line of text will go beside it if I go left, it means it will automatically move my image to the left-hand side and will allow my text to flow around it to the right. And, and you know, with the with moving it to the right, the text will flow around it to the left, okay? Um, when you're talking about alignment, you're talking about the alignment of your text. And you can see baseline, sub, super, top, all of these ones. Now, if anybody wants any more description of what these are or what's the difference between text bottom and bottom, they're all available in the PowerPoint. There's a list of what each one of them does and exactly how it works, okay? Horizontal margin are the margins that move around the outside of the image. At the moment, they're zero. So if I put text in here, the text will automatically appear right up against the side of my image. Border thickness, at the moment, I don't have a border around this and I can put in a border which thickens it out and so on. And then my image is 300 um, pixels wide, displayed at 300 pixels wide and 300 pixels high. OK, um, if I want to change that in a minute, we'll talk about that as well. OK, um, and keep aspects ratio off. I'm going to start stretching this. My advice is never, ever, 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 ever stretch your image in something like expression. OK, always do it in Photoshop or I'll be doing it and pick resize in a few minutes for you as well. OK, which we've dealt with again in Digital 4 earlier on uh, in the year. OK, so. Um, I'm just going to click on OK. Now I'm going to come along here, go back in. Sorry, I should have changed picture properties here. And I'm going to change the appearance to move to the left hand side. Doesn't, doesn't really change there, but when you, when you see when I put my text in the minute, you'll see that it will change. OK. The second thing I'm going to do is click on my image and add a link to it. This is exactly the same as I did with my text earlier on in my previous um, tutorials about links. OK. So all I'm going to do is put in www and tudublin.ie automatically pops in because that's the last link that I tried and remember I don't want it to open up in the same window or in the same tab I'm going to go target frame new window okay okay so when I save this preview it click on my image it'll open up TU Dublin in here which is perfect okay. now once I'm at this I'm going to just grab more text from here Back into my document here and paste in here okay and as you see because I align my image to the left hand side my my text now this came with this format where this text appears larger than this one and so on um, but it appears to the right hand side and flows around it and so on wraps around my text okay so I can change my text and keep it all to one size if I want it to be and so on so I can say a size 12 or whatever okay I can look at the spacing and I can change things like that as well okay and my font etc but that's the way it flows around it it works quite well and um, there's no uh, difficulty in that at all okay you also see that it also shows you right on the very bottom of expression the download size of my file which is 17.9k which is still very small and very um very manageable okay so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to put in an image um, and I'm going to see what happens when the image becomes a little bit more difficult to manage or a little bit unmanageable. Unman okay, so I'm just going to insert a pic picture here. And the picture I'm going to insert this time is this one here, which is 
uh, bring, bring your own device one, okay? Um, and it's going to insert this image like that. I'm going to say, bring your own device, okay? And I'm going to go, okay. Now, this image, if I just preview it here, you can see this image is very, very large, okay? So it's actually far too large for the page there and uh, probably way larger than I need it to be. And what I'm actually going to do with this is I'm going to uh, play around with this to make it smaller, okay? Um, to do that, I'm gonna go back to expression and you can see at the moment, my file size has gone from 17K or something like that, which is very, very small and very, very manageable, up to 1.29 megabytes, okay? Which is a very, very large file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't need this bring your own device image to be that big because it's far bigger than the size of my screen, etc. Okay, so I'm going to make it smaller, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm first of all going to show you what not to do, okay? And I'm hopefully going to show you why not to do it, okay? So I'm going to move right to the very edge of this image and I'm going to grab it by the corner, okay? Now, a lot of people do this in PowerPoint, grab the image and make it smaller, okay? Drag it in like that, okay? And drag it right in. Make it way smaller because it's way too big. Still too big for what I'm looking for here. I just drag it in like that, okay? Still a tiny little bit too big. Right, I'm going to just say I'm happy with that, okay? Bring your own device, okay? Now, what must be noticed very, very quickly here, I must be, you must take note of, I should say, very, very quickly here, is that even though I reduced the size of the image that's being displayed, the image itself isn't reduced. When you look down here at the bottom, again, it's the download size is still 1.29 megabytes, which is exactly the same size as it was before I, 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 I grabbed the corners and made this image smaller. So what I'm trying to say about this is that while the, the image is displayed smaller within the web page, the actual full image has to be downloaded first, okay? So in other words, the image itself isn't actually smaller. It's the same image being downloaded. Um, you can download a full large image and then it fits into a smaller space on the screen, okay? So really what I'm trying to say is what we actually should do is we should actually turn around and we should, instead of doing it that way, is we should use something to resize my image properly. And therefore we get the full um, optimization of the whole process. So I'm going to just look at this image, just going to right click it, I'm going to go in picture properties, I'm going to look at the size of it, appearance. So it's 466 by 363. 466 by 363, okay? Now, you also notice that when I dragged that in, I dragged it in and dragged the bottom of it. So it didn't keep its aspect ratio. So I'm going to actually just deal with one or of those, uh, one of those, either the width or the height in a second, okay? So I'm gonna just cancel that for a second and I'm gonna delete it. So remember that the file size was originally 1.29 megabytes um, with, with that image in there at that. So I'm gonna delete the image altogether. It goes back to the 17.9K down here in the bottom. And I'm going to use a package again that we used in um, before Christmas when we were dealing with Digital 4. And what we were using was, we were using a package called Pick Resize, okay? Pick Resize is a little website that will help me to resize my pictures, okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a file. Um, the file I'm going to be taking is this one here, which is your own device image okay and open that it opens that up in there and then I continue to the edit picture and I resize it in here and I'm going to I'm not going to go for one at 25% I'm going to go for custom size and I'm going to put in the width of 466
I'm not going to put in, it says height optional because what it'll do, it'll keep the aspect ratio of 466. Okay. I actually brought it into 336, so keep the aspect ratio, whereas my one was 363. Um, so the original size of the image was 2126 by 1535. Let's resize it down to this and this, okay? I'm not going to worry about any of the effects. And I can save the file as whatever format I want. And the four formats it gives me are the four ones that I've talked about earlier on in this tutorial. Um, JPEG, GIF, PNG, or bitmap. So I'm going to leave it on JPEG. I'm just going to say, I'm done, resize my picture, okay? And it resizes my picture. And you can see that it's gone from 1.3 kilobytes, or well, sorry, 1.3 megabytes down to 67 kilobytes, which is a way smaller file. So I'm going to save to disk. Now that saved that into my download folder, I would imagine. So I'm just going to just go into my download folder. Find a file, hopefully. Save it as. I'm going to save it as here. Sorry. I'm going to save it into my online tutorials. Now, never save the file as the same as the original name of the file because it will overwrite it. So I'm just going to save it as it's, got, it's called Resize BYOD Image 1 and go save. Okay. So saving a copy there of that. Now, when I look at these two files in my folder in here, you can see this one now is 67 kilobytes, as we said earlier on. And then the other one earlier on that I saved, which was this one here, was 1.3 megabytes, okay? Which is a way, way bigger file, about 50 times bigger or something like that, okay? So a way, way bigger file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to insert this into my web page using the resize one. As, as I keep mentioning here, it's one or 17.9K at the moment. If I go insert picture from file, I can now put in this new one that I've got here. And I just go insert that. And I'm just going to put in a new PYOD file. Doesn't make much sense from a search engine optimization perspective, but just for the moment. And that goes to 84K as opposed to 1.29K, which is way, or, uh, uh, 1.29 megabytes, I should say, which is way, way bigger. As well as that, it keeps the aspect ratio uh, good as well. Okay, so again, really, really good way to do it. Guys, even if you're trying to just resize a little bit, don't ever just grab and just drag it. Don't ever do that because always use something like Photoshop or something like Canva or pick resize to resize your image because you will get a lot more from the optimization of your image in that, in that way, in that method, okay?